Uh, so my name is Salah Sakari, I'm from the University of Sydney and the presentation here is about a project that we have which was uh, looking at developing or, or trying to understand whether what we could do with on-farm robotics and especially in the grazing livestock industry. Um, just to show that we're not just a bunch of nerds that have kind of gone through and, and try to put robots on farms, a little bit about the history of the group. It's been around for about 25 years. It's located at the University of Sydney and it's really at the point of bringing in academia and dealing with industry at the same time and transitioning a lot of the technology or a lot of the research out of the university labs into industry hands. Um, and these are just some of the examples of the work that we've done over the last 25 years. So we've automated straddle carriers for the stevedoring industry, so all the ports in Brisbane, Melbourne and Sydney have the technology that we developed out of our lab. Uh, we've just finished 10 years with Rio Tinto and still going on, um, and all the work that you hear about automation at the Pilbara, a lot of that comes from our labs as well. Uh, we've just finished a project with Qantas, uh, redoing their flight planning system. The picture at the top left hand corner is a solar electric robot that's just about going through the final stages into commercialization for the horticulture industry and it goes up and down vegetable row farms and it detects individual plants and removes weeds and, and detects pests as well. And the picture in the bottom right hand corner is a project that we had with MLA back in 2005 looking at monitoring large scale farms and being able to do automatic woody weed detection, so detecting weeds amongst plants and things like that. So it has a long history and the focus of our lab is really about looking at the fundamentals of robotics and, and in particular field robotics which is to be able to be able to build intelligent outdoor machines that can operate 24 hours, 7 days a week in, in all weather conditions and putting intelligence on the platform so it can actually undertake uh, uh, tasks of form, various forms. So back in 2015 we received some donor funding to look at building a low cost robot that could work in really tough and difficult farm terrains. And this was, uh, and what we wanted to do was build a robot that could do a variety of tasks, so really be an automated swag man, which is why we called it a swag bot um, at the end of the day. And it had to work in, in difficult terrain and be able to work around animals as well and do various tasks. And this was some of the original trials that we did on, on a series of different farms and worked with farmers and, and tried to understand what their requirements were. And there was a lot of positive feedback from the farmers and they kind of thought, yep, this would be really cool. And, and we ended up with a, a series of workshops after that um, and looking at some various different elements. And we defined what we would call in our area some minimal viable products. So we wanted to develop some technology as quickly as possible, test it on the farm, get the feedback from the farmers and, and come back in again. And from these, four, from these workshops, four key areas uh, came out of, of what the farmers were looking for. One was to build a, a mobile robot platform that could operate 24-7, had to be low cost, and it had to be really easy to use so that farmers could come along and plug and play whatever equipment they wanted onto the robot. And really easy in the sense of being able to also say, go to a particular location on a farm and the robot would just find its way across and deal with any obstacles uh, along the way. So that was one of the first key areas. And if you could build that, then you really had a, a, a general purpose platform that could be used on different operations uh, across different farms. But they also wanted us to focus on three key operational areas, and that was pasture quality and pasture health. So if the robot was moving around, could it measure pasture quality and do so down at the centimetre level and start to build up high quality maps? The other one was weed management, so detecting weeds and as well as dealing with the weeds in different forms. And finally, around the animal behaviour area and animal management area. So post those workshops, we then got some funding from MLA to go through this one year of project between 2017 uh, and uh, ending in June this year to really take those ideas and kind of prove them, to take them up to higher, what we call TRLs, higher technolo technology readiness levels, and really demonstrate their viability uh, on a farm. So this is what the current swag bot looks like, and you'll see a range of different things. So uh, each wheel here can be controlled independently, both velocity and steering, which means we can then do some very fancy manoeuvres and crab and, and get out of tight situations. There's a robotic arm that's sitting underneath there, and that robotic arm can take soil samples, it can spray. Um, we're also looking at now being able to detect cow pats and taking samples of cow pats. Uh, and you've got some sensors out the front and around the side, and that's really the robot being able to measure its environment, looking at where the animals are moving, being able to look at pasture and, and, and so forth, as well as obstacle detection. And there's a large scale activity in terms of autonomy, having the robot move around autonomously. So one of the few th first things we did was connect up to a user interface. Uh, um, um, MLA had a, an offshoot program called FarmMap4D and we, we tapped into that. And basically a user can come along now and, 
and click on where their farm property is and click on no-go zone areas as well as areas that they'd like to monitor. And with a click of a button, that information is uploaded into Swagbot. Swagbot now knows where to move and, and, and what to do. So we've done lots of autonomy trials going through the farm, in both on-road and off-road, so on-path and off-path. This is an example of it going, following a path autonomously, detecting an obstacle, and then being able to maneuver away from the obstacle, uh, but at the same time maintain itself on the path as well. So it's looking at following paths and going off and on paths, as well as detecting obstacles and moving away from the obstacles uh, in real time and doing so autonomously. So if the robot can move anywhere along the farm, the next thing we'll be able to do is to be able to measure pasture quality and pasture, and pasture health, uh, so quantity and quality as well. Uh, so these are just some different snapshots of what can be done uh, from the centimetre resolution on the left all the way through to large scale mapping on the, on the right. And basically what we do is we, we put a different number of different sensors on the robot and we go around and we're collecting all this data and we're using machine learning algorithms to learn the re relationship between the different data, so different spectral properties that come back. So the sensor will give us different spectral properties based on the information that we get and then we, from that we try and deduce what the quality of that pasture might look like. So we've got this robot now that can move around and it can uh, detect obstacles, move around obstacles. It can also measure the pasture quality. One of the other areas was to be able to detect weeds. This is an example of the robot being able to move through the area and automatically detect serrated tussock and identify serrated tussock amongst the different vegetation uh, that's out there. It's again a machine learning algorithm where we just train it to detect different types of weeds. That was the forward-looking camera, and we're also looking at the downward-looking camera here. So if you can combine those two things together while the robot's moving around, looking at pasture quality, it's trying to detect whether there's any weeds, and if it finds any weeds, it will come along, position itself, and spray whatever it needs to spray on that particular weed. In this case here, we did serrated tussock. We also looked at African boxthorn as well. And the algorithms that are at a good, at, at a high fidelity now that we can train up the algorithms within a few hours to detect different types of weeds quite easily. So uh, you can now move the robot around, you can measure pasture quality, you can detect weeds and spray weeds, and this is just another example of what we can do with regards to animal monitoring or animal, animal herding. In this particular case, the farmer told us that the cows particularly like something sweet. So what we did was we diluted some molasses here and we just put it onto the robot and then the robot moved around and we just started to spray molasses in different areas. And the idea was to see whether or not the cows would want to follow and, and then chew on it, and, and, and they did, right? So, the, so there was a way now of being able to take this robot from one location. If you can measure the pasture quality, and you can determine where good pasture is for the animal, then spraying it and having the animals lead there would be the right thing. And what that means about infrastructure is a good question. So what happens about fences and things like that, if you can precisely measure where you want the animals to go and take them to that particular location. And another thing we did was uh, we recorded the farmer's voice when the farmer was calling out for the, for the animals, and we just put some speakers on the robot, and the, the robot just calls out, and the animals you know, kind of get excited, and they listen, and they follow. And that's another, so it's a bit of a Pied Piper approach to the whole process, right? So you, if you want to lead the animals from one area to another, one way was to push them along, which is the original video was showing you that, and that doesn't work well when you kind of move the, the robot into the, into the herd and they kind of just go all over the place. But if you start to lead them, then they'll start to go from one location uh, to another. So this is my final slide, just kind of giving you a wrap up of, of where we are at the moment now. The, the key areas was, was to be able to develop a robot that was quite modular and quite easy to use, and, and that's been done on the left. And underneath there, you've got these things called TRLs, which are technology readiness levels. When it's a nine, it's really a product. Um, and so what we're saying here is that the, the robot itself as a platform is ready to kind of take it out of the lab and start to go through the next phase, which is around 24-7 operations and being able to let a farmer just be able to use it uh, and going from point A to point B anywhere on the farm. Pasture quality and availability is also quite high. There's still a little bit of research to do, but we can still do a lot in terms of pasture quantity. Um, that's something that's already, you know, that we can take out as well into an operational form. Weed management, we've been able to develop the algorithms and the software so that you can detect any type of weed, but there's training of the different weeds. But again, the, from a research perspective, that's ready to go out. So with regards to the platform, pasture quality and weed management, they're quite they're ready now to be able to take out of the lab and start to put it into an operational trial. The hardest one is around animal behaviour and welfare. So we're trying to look at some various forms, and I showed you some examples there about moving animals around. But the sense, the system, we've collected large amounts of data, laser data, vision data, of the animals in real time out in the paddock as the robot moves around. So we're going through the research phase now of how do you detect individual animals? Can you monitor individual animals over a period of time and 
look at changes in behaviour, which is another thing. Um, what's quite interesting is that if the animal, if the, if the robot gets, well, the animals get used to the robot too much, um, you don't want them to come along and use it as a scratching post, right? The robot's only about 80 kilograms, right? So you can easily knock it over. So this ability to come close but also maintain a safe distance is one of the other areas that we need to look at. So thank you. <laughs>